think that there's a lot of slants. If, if people are, are trying to pitch ideas, you have to have an, um, the audience in mind who's reading it. You have to look at what they usually put on the page that you're trying to advertise or promote on. And you have to align with what it is that they would normally put there. And that's what you did. <clears throat> and that's what I did with my health slant on, on the curiosity angle. Um, because I think, you know, I, I, there's so much we could talk about in the pitching of ideas for, you know, different media and, and different ways of, of getting the same book or idea out to different uh, audiences. But that that's the thing that drives me the most crazy though, as a radio show host or the people who pitch me their weight loss books or their things that have nothing, <laughs> <And they laughs> nothing to do with my business show. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and I mean, Gilda gets it. She's pitching health, even though her book is more business related, the aspects of that, that imply the health aspects, right? And I had health aspects to my business book as well. The curiosity built dopamine, made you feel better. You know, that's a health thing. But if you're trying to get on a business show and do meditative techniques, that might be, you know, oh. borderline, I mean, to make you better in business, but you'd have to really slant it to make sure you're doing it the business way. I mean, I've had the, the mother of meditation from Harvard on my show. I've had Daniel Goldman on because he's in the, the big guru for emotional intelligence, but he's into meditative type of things now, mindfulness, I should say. So there's, there's aspects, but the way you pitch it is really important and how you communicate what you're going to communicate. Right. Yeah, I think this is a very important topic to understand because mm -hmm. you can't just say, and I get all of these pitches every single day. Yeah. They're pitching me this book and this book and this book, not even knowing what my area of expertise is. Why right. are you why are you pitching a cookbook to me? Yeah. Why are you I, I mean a lot I, of that? This doesn't make any sense. I did I like the one cookbook guy on my show, though. I have to say, <laughs> he's the guy who created uh, the reversing of recipes, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, backwards to get the right, you know, recipe so you can make the chicken. And, and he was on the Wendy Williams show, and we were talking about that. It was kind of, it was kind of interesting. But he pitched it in a way that I thought, yeah, I could talk to you. You might be something business wise. Okay. That's a cool idea, you know. But you see. He knew in advance mm -hmm. that you have a business show. Yeah, he, no, he did it the right way. You don't have a cooking show. He knew in advance that you weren't on the Food Network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. I've had actually a lot of the White House chefs on my show, which is an interesting show for a business uh, because you want to, people are interested in, in that, uh, connection yeah. to the presidents and the things. So you can find connections, uh, to different things. Well, uh, wait, it's not up to you to find the connection. No, it's no, no, no. It's, it's the pitching to, of it. It's right. So mm -hmm. I, I have one plea for everybody who's watching this today. Make sure you know where your pitch is going and then make sure your pitch hits that radio or television show's pain points. Tell them what they need to blah, blah, blah. Because you watch the show and you know what the show is and you don't want to waste anybody's time. That is so important. You know, I think having your platform somewhere on it of who you, if you've been on something big or done something big, I think it helps to get on some of those shows. For me, if I think that this is your first book and you're writing about your parents, nice, but this is probably not going to be, <laughs> I, I don't, I have, you know, people waiting six months to get on, you're probably not going to make it right. But <laughs> If uh, you happen to have been picked up by the T Today Show because you did this or did some, you know, if you have had some exposure and there's a unique angle that you, you made it into the, the um, you know, uh, but, most but then, most push ups in the history of whatever. I, I actually, I think I have one guy did the most sit ups or I don't know. You know, you get these different ones. The one White House chef had the biggest bicep. I think he had 24 inch biceps or something big. Wow. And, <laughs> And he was great. Chef Andre, he was on my show. I liked him a lot. But there's there's so many people um, who may seem fringe-ish, 
but they, just like this might be fringe ish to get into the, you know, a uh, wall, I mean, to get into uh, the, uh, um, where were you just recently? National Enquirer. <laughs> <National> <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Okay, to get into the National Enquirer, you might think it's all Hollywood, it's not all whatever, but they do have different sections. And so look at where you're pitching different sections. I mean, I'm in different magazines based on the different magazines. But this was specifically meant for the health page, which is an entirely different kind of insert into the rest of their um I just magazine. thought of a very important magazine. What is that? <laughs> Luna made oh, yes! Luna made the cover of <laughs> yes, everybody, everybody. They didn't want me. They wanted my dog. Let's see. No, Let's they see. wanted Bob. Oh, they wanted <laughs> they wanted my husband. <laughs> and beautiful, and you are to be commended. You look absolutely ravishing. Oh, and Luna well, cannot be held like that. I anymore. can't be held. I I just I started <laughs> holding her for you before the show, and I'm like. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. She's probably about 10, 15 pounds there. She's 40 something now. But I saw those muscles yesterday when we were walking. Boy, that girl has <laughs> just developed. Yes, she has. And she's so fun. But uh, it, it's been um, just an important discussion today because I think that a lot of people um, limit themselves, but the, or they overshoot the mark too much. And you have to, you have to kind of do a Venn diagram. Like I'm this and I'm this and I'm this. And where, where's that? That's a good spot? idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I wonder how many PR people have done a Venn diagram. I don't know. I am a, a nerd with diagrams. I mean, whether it's Gantt charts or Venn diagrams or scrum or whatever it is, I, I, I like to figure it out, you know? <laughs> Nerd alert, as we did my our technical stuff right before the show, right? I love it. But uh, this was so much fun. And this I'm so fun. glad we, we got to talk about this today. This is I'm very, very adamant about people pitching in the right way so that they can get out their information as they want. You need not feel frustrated. You need not feel as though you're missing the mark. If you do your homework in advance, I will pitch my book once again, because everything that you need to know is in that book. And for $9.99 on <laughs> Gentle, I mean, it's a lot cheaper than hiring one of us to come and, and talk to you individually.